having lemma okay we are going to continue our discussion of work energy methods and uh, we are going to look at a different application today where uh, you have spring potential energy coming into play along with work done on a body as well as kinetic energy okay so we will start with a simple system and grow into a, a, a slightly more complicated system so we are going to look at a work energy method with a spring so let us take a very simple example some mass m and this happens to be lying on a surface with no friction I am going to place my origin at some point here say that is my positive x axis and I am going to denote this length of the spring L as the free length. So, a spring typically has something called a free length and that is the length at which the force becomes 0. So, the force on this body is 0 when the spring is of is of that length, but in this particular instance uh, I am going to place my origin there and look at uh, the position with respect to that free length. So, the mass of this this mass is likely to be both to the right as well as to the left of this origin O okay, and uh, we will see what the forces look like on either side. So, I am going to draw a free body diagram of this body. So, there is a mass m the center of mass there is a weight of the body because it is in a gravitational field. there is an equal and opposite normal reaction now where the spring is tethered there is a force f and this body has an acceleration a okay so this is our free body diagram so, now let us start with the kinematics part. The kinematics in this particular instance tells us that the acceleration is the second derivative of position, which for compact uh, notation using compact notation I will use the idea of double dot. So, A equals x double dot. So, now if I go through and complete the calculation taking all forces to my right positive sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. The only horizontal force is the one due to the spring and I will call this F sub s ok. The only horizontal force is F sub s all vertical forces have already cancelled out. So, minus F sub s equals m x double dot. Now, for a linear spring F sub s equals k times x the magnitude of F sub s is equal to k times s that means I have already taken care of the fact that it is in the negative x direction because the uh, extension is in the positive x direction. So, I am going to place this for positive x for positive x f sub s is minus k x and that is how I end up with uh, f s being k x. So, if I make that substitution I will end up with an equation that says or I can write this in the form of x double dot plus omega sub n squared x equal to 0 where omega n is square root of k over m also called the circular frequency.
so what we for, what we we started with force balance and then ended up with a situation where i have this actual force acting on the body is uh, actual force acting on the body is kx is mass times acceleration and if the body is to the right of the origin in the positive x space the force is to the left if the body is to the left of the origin the force is to the right and that accounts for this kind of an oscillatory motion of this body on this frictionless plane. Okay. So, this is what we call natural oscillations of this body. So, in the instance where uh, I let us say the body is at the origin there is no perturbation there is no spring force the body would remain there. If I pull the spring slightly and let go it would undergo a cyclic oscillation and the frequency of that cyclic oscillation is given by this omega n equals square root k over m. Okay. So, we have gotten this information from uh, applying Newton's laws of Newton's second law. So, I am going to do look at this in a slightly different way I am going to take at m x double dot plus k x equal to 0. I am going to multiply this by x dot. Okay. So, if I multiply this by x dot what we end up showing is that m times v dot times v plus k x times x dot equal to 0 where v equal to x dot. So, I am going to simply make a substitution of, of variables here I am going to call x dot as some v I am going to only do that in the first term and you will see quickly why I did that v times v dot is the I can write it more compactly as the derivative of half v squared the time derivative of half v squared likewise this becomes the derivative of half x squared equal to 0. So, if I now come back and use that information here I can write that equation more compactly as the time derivative of half m v squared plus half k x squared is equal to 0 <coughs> and what this means is that the sum total kinetic energy plus the spring potential energy is constant. So, uh, the sum total energy kinetic plus spring potential does not change with time. Okay. So, this kind of a system is called a conserved system so it because it conserves energy this is the simplest case of an oscillator an undamped because there is no damping of energy there is no uh, conversion of mechanical energy to any other form this is called uh, uh, this is basically a simplest example of energy stored in the mass in the form of half mv squared and stored in the spring in the form of half kx squared interchanging their magnitudes. Okay, so, we are going to add a next level of complexity to this and let us see what we learn. I am going to keep the rest of the system the same except instead of a, a block I am going to use a cylinder that is on a surface with no slip. Okay, so, the spring is now connected to the center of a 
of a cylinder of some radius r. So, this is some radius capital R and this is sitting on a plane where the contact point between the uh, plane and the cylinder shows no slip. Okay. We do not understand the dynamics of this, rest of it remains the same. So, we will start by drawing a free body diagram like we have always done. This is my cylinder, this is the weight of the cylinder mg, there is a normal reaction n. I am going to draw this like I said in the positive x for positive x although it does not matter. When I choose that for positive x the only difference is I am able to give a direction to the spring force. Now there is one additional force here because I have no slip at this point. Because I have no slip at this point, I have friction and I am going to know which way the friction acts. I am going to assume it is in the positive direction and its magnitude is some f. Okay. I have an, a, a linear acceleration of this point A as well as an angular acceleration alpha. So, this object has an angular acceleration alpha as well as a linear acceleration A. So, let us start by applying the laws of kinematics first like, like we have always done. Kinematics says two things, one like just like we had in the first instance A equals x double dot okay, that does not change. In addition, we also have another condition that x r A equals r times alpha. <clears throat> that comes from no slip. So, now let us apply the laws of kinetics. So, the first thing taking all forces to my right positive sum of forces is mass times acceleration say minus k times x plus f. This f is due to the friction force f sub s has a magnitude kx okay so minus kx plus f equals mx double dot so this is what our force balance uh, applying newton second law in the positive x direction tells us in the vertical direction all it tells me is that the normal reaction is exactly equal and opposite to the weight of the cylinder itself. Now, I have a one more additional law which is our Euler's uh, law that the sum of mass sum of the moments about the center of mass g equals i g times alpha. Now, I must repeat this one last time once more I think it is worth it. If I choose moments about the point of contact, I will call this A, I will have to be very careful because that point A has a, that point A uh, in this instance is at rest, but in general if it is not at rest or if it is in a non-constant non -constant velocity mode, I will get erroneous answers. So, like I have always advocated stick to the center of mass being your point of reference for applying moments uh, for applying the the Euler's second law and you would always be uh, okay. okay. So, let us see what are all the forces that uh, that are responsible for a moment uh, the normal reaction the mass of the body as well as the spring force all act through g. So, they do not cause a moment the only force that causes a moment is the friction force and that friction force has a moment arm of uh, value r 
i g in this particular instance is half m r squared alpha. So, let us go through simplify this minus f equals half m r alpha minus which implies minus f is half m x double dot. I am going to replace r alpha with x double dot because a equals x double dot as well as r alpha. So, if this is my equation 1 and this is equation 2 using equation 2 in 1 what do I get? <coughs> minus k x minus half m x double dot equals m x double dot. And if I simplify this I have 3 half m x double dot plus k x equal to 0. So, when this object was a square was a just a rigid object sliding on a frictionless inclined plane, I had this equation come out to be m x double dot plus k x equal to 0, whereas now I have this additional factor 3 halves. And that is come because this cylinder has a rotation to go with it now. So, this cylinder is translating as well as rotating about its center of mass. So, the previous example of just the block sliding on a frictionless plane was a single degree of freedom block that is it had only one degree of freedom to store energy, store kinetic energy. Whereas, this mass which is a cylinder of radius r and mass m has two degrees of freedom to store kinetic energy. One it could translate and another it could rotate. Both of those are, are uh, ways of storing energy as far as this object is concerned. Okay. So, let us complete this calculation. So, the first thing if I write this in the standard form of an undamped oscillator we find that omega n now is two thirds has a factor two thirds underneath the radical. So, that is a lower natural frequency for the same mass now if I look at the instantaneous velocity of this body. So, if the translational velocity of this body, so let us see if we can do the same kind of work energy uh, calculation for this as well. If I have the cylinder moving with some velocity v and an angular velocity omega because of no slip. v equals r omega. So, the only way this body can move at any point is if it rotates correspondingly. So, if I do the same calculation as what I have what I did before the same kind of a argument we will find if I multiply by x dot and making a substitution at v equal to x dot
Now this is still not in the form we wrote towards the end of the, uh, the calculation the last time. Three halves into half m v squared plus half k x squared equal to zero. I want to rationalize the origin of this number three half. Okay, so what that tells me is that I can write this as one half m v squared plus one half of one half m r squared omega squared knowing that r omega is v from here plus half k x squared the time derivative of this whole quantity in the square parentheses is 0. So now completing this calculation we find half i sub g omega squared plus half k x squared equal to 0. So here is an explicit way to see that there is kinetic energy stored in two forms this is kinetic energy 1 this is kinetic energy 2 and this is spring potential energy okay so this shows us two things one you can use uh, newton's laws as well as euler's laws to understand problems involving vibrations okay and you can also rationalize the energy content in each degree of freedom uh, by converting the problem to uh, a work energy kind of a formulation. Now you will notice here as well that the time derivative of all the four, three forms of energy in this particular problem uh, the sum total energy does not change with time. So this is also an example of a conserved system okay. Now I want you to understand one thing I do have friction. I do have friction at the point of contact but it is still a conserved system primarily because that friction does no work. It, there is no relative motion at this point and because there is no relative motion at that point there is no net destruction of energy of mechanical energy. So essentially even though you have friction this is an example of a conserved system so the moral of that part, that part of the story is that existence of friction force alone is not a bad thing it is relative motion along with friction force that is responsible for uh, dissipation of mechanical energy. Good I hope this uh, brought a flavor of the various kinds of dynamics problems uh, that occur uh, to you I hope you enjoyed this class I mean it has been a couple of months of fairly intense discussion both uh, in statics and in dynamics and I hope you will continue to learn from NPTEL and from all the other uh, sources of information that are available to you. Feel free to write to us if you have any questions and uh, we look forward to you registering for the certification course. The last date has been extended it is now up to March 1st you can register for the course and we believe it will add value to your to your to yourselves. Um, if you test for yourself uh, your own abilities in a proctored exam situation. So we invite you to register for the course and we invite you to, to learn along with us. Thank you very much.